What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I hope you had a good week one. It was very unpredictable for me, but it was awesome to have fantasy basketball back. I hope you're as, as excited for the league, uh, for the season this year as I am. So let's look forward to week two and I'm going to talk about some players that I'm targeting from the waiver wire this week. And I'm gonna quickly look at the schedule as well for week two to see which teams are playing how many games. So just a reminder with, with these videos, I normally do these each week, but I'm mainly focusing on players that relate to 12 league teams and above. Um, looking at mainly category guy, category league players and um, I don't have any suggestions from Taco League, so don't expect like players like Dyson Daniels, Norman Powell to be on this list going forward in the season as they should have been drafted. And this will apply to players that really shouldn't be on the wire anymore as the season progresses. Not gonna waste your time and all mine suggesting players that won't be there. Uh, today's video schedule is the first part of the video. Just gonna quickly take a look at which teams are playing how many games, as I said earlier, and then we'll dive right into the waiver wire and which players that I wanna target this week. Um, so the schedule, there's only one team with two games, that's Philadelphia. There's many teams with three games. Um, so the Charlotte, Chicago, Golden State, Houston, Indiana, Clippers, Lakers, Miami, Milwaukee, Minnesota, Knicks, OKC, Phoenix, and Washington. And everyone else has four games, there's quite a lot. Majority of the league, so you're looking at Atlanta, Boston, Brooklyn, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Memphis, Pelicans, Orlando, Portland, Sacramento, Spurs, Toronto, and Utah. That's a lot to say in a mouthful. So um, light games as well, there are, Light games both on Tuesday and Thursday, so there's four games on each of those days. Dallas and Utah are playing both. I like to highlight that because um, it's good to pick up players from these teams sometimes because of the fact that they're playing on your light days and they're not going to clash with anyone if you have too many players playing uh, on a particular day. Especially, this is good for especially with teams that have like three or four, sorry, three players from one team. Um, so it can be good to get um, some waiver wires that are playing on uh, the light days as well. Um, just the other thing I want to mention that's not up here is Portland is playing five games the next seven nights from what I um, saw and that may be helpful if you're looking at players like Tumani Kamara, Tum Tumani Kamara, I don't know how to say his first name properly, um, or Donovan Klingon. So just want to look at week two, the back-to-backs. Um, we got so Sunday, Monday, forget because Sunday's already passed. That's today. We got Monday and Tuesday, Dallas, Denver, Sacramento, Utah. Tuesday, Wednesday, there's Brooklyn, Golden State, and Pelicans. So these are the teams playing on both those days. Wednesdays and Thursday, the back to backs is the Clippers, Memphis, and Spurs. Um, Thursday and Friday, there's none. Friday and Sunday, there's heaps Boston, Charlotte, Cleveland, Denver, Minnesota, OKC, Portland, Sacramento, and Toronto. Saturday, Sunday, which is the end of the week, there's none. And then Sunday, which is the last day, and then the first day of next week, which is week three, you've got Atlanta, Brooklyn, Dallas, Detroit, New Orleans, and Orlando. So I like to pick a lot of teams from the Friday, Saturday back to back and the Sunday, Monday, mainly because I know what categories I'm going to be targeting as the week progresses, um, as opposed to the start of the week where I'm losing my waiver wise but not really sure exactly where I'm going and what I want to um, target in terms of categories because obviously each week you don't know where you're going to um, excel and where you're going to underperform. So that's just some thought, food for thought. Let's get into the waiver targets. This is the main part of the video. Um, so just a couple of guys that I've listed here. The guys in green is people that I really like. The guys in yellow, yeah, people that I not, don't mind. And then the ones in white, I could go either way on. So Scotty Pippen Jr., he's good for steals and assists as I've written up there. Um, gets around 20 minutes a game. Could average maybe nine points, three boards, four and a half assists, 1.3 steals. Got a little bit overinflated there in the text. And he looks to be getting around 20 minutes a game, which is really important. And just remember that Jar Morant injury potential. Um, I don't want to, you know, obviously think that into existence, but based off the history, it's it could be happening. So Scotty Pippen looking great until all those other guys come back, like Vince Williams Jr. Um, or Gigi Jackson, which I think Gigi's age is away. I think he's like out for at least two months. Um, moving on to the list, Malik Beasley, great for threes when he's on hot streaks, which he's on now. But if he goes cold, drop him immediately because that's who he is. He's hot and cold. Seth Curry, he's also getting a lot of minutes as well, which is great and the reason why he's on the list here. But other, honestly, I don't really like him too much. Um, depending on unless you like you desperately need threes. Seth Curry, another three-point guy. He's getting about 25 minutes a game. Could be good for like 10, 10, 11 points, three boards, three assists with two threes. Chris Dunn, looking awesome, getting about 20 minutes a game. He's mainly for steals only, but he gets a couple of rebounds at that guard position. He had a really great game today. Had four steals and like seven assists, I think, or seven rebounds, four assists, sorry. Um, yeah, looking good. And, and as time progresses, I think he could win Ty Lue over and get more and more minutes. Donovan Kligan, another guy that's not getting many minutes, but doing really well when he does. So he gets about 12, 13 minutes a game. Game, and he seems to be averaging nearly two blocks a game. Now that's probably going to come down. He's a rookie, so who knows if it's sustainable, but at the moment he's a permanent block beast, um, similar to another guy that's later on this list. And I think this guy's a prime target for silly season um, once 
Portland starts resting for their um, Cooper Flags sweepstakes. Tara Eason, another guy that potentially on your wire looks to be getting about 16, 18 minutes a game, which is all I think he's going to get because of his injury management. I just don't see that changing, at least for the first two, three months of the season. Um, good for maybe four or five rebounds and two stocks per game in both steals and blocks. Anthony Black seems to be good, getting 20 plus minutes a game. Could be good for 10 points, three boards, three assists, and maybe one and a half stocks. Uh, mainly steals at the moment, he's getting blocks, it seems. Abaji as well, good for 25 minutes a game at the moment with all the injuries, and it could be good for maybe 10 points, 4 rebounds, 1 to 2 threes, and 1, point, 1 to 1.5 one steals per game as well. So Misi is the next guy up that I was talking about, the blocks specialist at the moment. He seems to be getting about 20 minutes a game, and even that's that's even with two games back with Zion. So it looks too good. At the moment, he's averaged two blocks in every single game with about four or five rebounds. Um, I don't know what's sustainable, but I think if you need blocks, he's definitely worth looking at based off his current trajectory. McBride is awesome for threes and points. Um, and could be good for maybe 12 points a game going off the whole season as he's the main guy off the Knicks bench and there's not much scoring outside him off the bench. Just remember as well, New York love to run their players into the ground or should I say Thibs loves to run his players into the ground which means there's potential for injuries which means there's potential for his usage and minutes to increase as the season goes on during stretches. So definitely someone to monitor at worst um, and pick up at best as well. So if you need threes and points because that's all he'll really give. Trey Mann, he looks awesome. He's in green because he should be picked up in most I'd say definitely 60 man leagues he's gone 14 most likely gone and 12 mm, meh, depending on what you need but I think he's good for finishing the season at maybe 14 points four rebounds four assists uh, one steal with two threes I think he's looking great he's looking for that extension as well so I could see him playing hard all season and he solidified that sixth man role which is really important lastly I uh, just want to mention Lamella Ball's injury history so if you think that he's definitely getting injured you're going to really want to pick up uh, Trey Man because when Lamelo is gone, this guy's going to get a lot of shots. Um, he had 19 shots in game two, 31 minutes in game three. The guy has a lot of potential in that team at the moment, based off what I've seen. Dylan Brooks, pretty similar roles to last season. Looks like he's good for like maybe 10, 12 points, three boards, one and a half threes, one steal a game. So can't complain with that if you're looking at like 16 team leagues. Uh, Benedict Matherin, similar to last season as well. Good for maybe 15 points a game. Um, he's mainly good for points and free throws. That's about it. I don't think his three points have improved that much. And I think he will come and burst like he had 20 points in the first two games and then eight in game three so it'll be like that all season unless injuries free up more time for him christian bourne's looking really good at the starters getting about close to high 20 minutes a game could average nine points five boards two stocks by the end and you know last year i think he had 0.6 blocks per game when he started so um could easily see him with like caruso type stats um because if he looks great with the starters just he just scraps he does all the things that the others don't do compliments them well so see how it goes i think he's definitely worth the pick up in 16 14 so maybe even 12s uh jordan hawkins another guy that's good for threes and points similar to mcbride um and he's looking like he's solidified a role off the bench he's getting about 12 shots a game but we'll wait till murray is back and trey murphy but until then i think he's locked into a good role maybe 10 to 12 points a game with those threes as his calling card just to finish off the video, this, these are players that I'm not targeting, but players I'm monitoring. So Isaiah Jackson, this just he's the only backup to Miles Turner now that Wiseman's out. But the thing is, Carlisle just doesn't want to give him minutes. But when he does get minutes, he he seems to go off, and that could be in blowouts and things like that. So I don't know. It's, take that as you as however you want, but um, I, I'm definitely monitoring him. KPJ is another guy I'm monitoring because I did have him in some of my leagues and I've dropped him. Um, just because I thought he was going to do really well off that bench, but he looks to be struggling in that reserve role, looks to be struggling, not just with his shot, but just like, I think he just wants the ball and sort of wants to be the man. Um, I don't know if it's an attitude thing, don't know if it's a scheme thing, I don't know, but it's three games in the season, it's very early to tell. I haven't given up on him completely, um, but I just think that unless Harden is out, it looks like he is just not going to get as much usage as he needs to. And just looking back at his last two years in Houston, he was averaging like 16 field goal attempts a game. I don't think he's going to get anywhere near that. Best, I think, at absolute best off the bench is looking at maybe 12 attempts a game. So I still I still think his best could be maybe like 12 points a game, four boards, four assists, one steal, two threes, which is great in deeper leagues, but it could take a little bit of time to get there. But um, see how you go. In my deeper leagues, I've held him, but in the shallow ones, like the 12, I've dropped him. Stephon Castle, um, with Trey Jones out and for two weeks now, and Devin Vassell already out for like, I think four weeks, he's definitely worth the pickup or a speculative ad, sorry, I should say not worth the pickup um, due to the fact that he's the main sort of playmaker off the bench, well, not a main playmaker. There's, they've got a combo, but yeah, you know, he's 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 a great player. Like if you've seen him play, he's he's smart. He he looks mature. He knows what he's doing. and He can do a lot as well. And I think he's good for maybe eight points, three boards, 
three assists, one steal type game uh, with one three. So yeah, Stefan Castle definitely keep an eye on him. Jay Huff, another guy, center that shoots threes. Uh, speculative ad is worth it, but uh, it's hard to say with JJJ back. Um, who knows if he's going to get minutes? Two of their games have been blowouts as well for Memphis, so it's hard to say. But I think centers that shoot threes. Oh, sorry, I should mention that he gets blocks each game. Um, that's probably been his calling card. I think he's averaged like one and a half blocks in three games. So I, again, I don't know. New player, I've never even seen him before, so I don't know whether or not that's consistent. But again, if you need um, centers that shoot threes and get blocks, which is pretty rare, it could be worth it. Uh, Eric Gordon's the last guy as well to monitor. Um, yeah, first two games he got 20 minutes, then he got 32 minutes. But again, with all the guys coming back from injuries, Embiid and PG this week, he might go back to 20 minutes even less. But I think if he gets 30 minutes a game going forward, he could be good for 12 points a game with threes like McBride. And the main thing to remember with him is that um, Nick Nurse loves small ball. And if he plays small ball a lot more, uh, Eric Gordon is going to get a lot of shots up. So definitely someone to monitor. But again, we'll see how the week goes. There's going to be heaps of gems going forward as the weeks progress. So if you've got anyone underperforming, don't worry too much. You know, let, let the season work itself out and you, you, um, you'll you feel good for not overreacting um, as I used to do in the past. But um, I hope this video gave you some tips or insights um, or at least some value at all. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to week two. Um, it's been pretty unpredictable. But um, yeah, I'll have some more videos going forward uh, in uh, week two and week three. I'm looking at doing some buy low, sell high videos as well. But until the next one, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Bye.